stuff I thought I would talk about here. James and my brother met him in a private school. I'm just not going to look at the camera. You can't be quiet. Okay. My brother met him in a private school when they connected. And they had this connection at seven years old that you just wouldn't believe. James was kind of short. My brother was really tall. And my brother traveled with his mother and their Native American to all the powwows all over the place. And they had such a fabulous time. And then they went to Bolivia and they made so many wonderful friends. And these two boys are just geniuses and like this. They might have a fight, but they always knew. They always knew. And he was so funny and fun and lovable and loved life. He was a hippie, but would tell you with all the problems, he wanted to help everybody, even if it was wrong, he wanted to help people. And he didn't understand people being angry and not forgiving him, but he forgive everybody. I don't know what the lessons are to learn about this. His mother now has buried three children, one's in diabetic. She had diabetes, juvenile diabetes, and she passed away in 2013, I think August. His brother, like I said, passed away from uh, terminal cancer very quickly. It took him. And then James, I guess it was his addiction. I guess addiction. I don't know. The only thing I can, that I've been saying today, it's going to sound random, but... A couple weeks ago, I watched uh, Cocktails with Chloe, and there was a lady on there, and her son had autism, and she talked about how difficult it was to teach him of, um, infinite, <laughs> empathy and how to empathize with people, and they talked about with Dr. Drew, and how that would be like his one like magical trick if he could save the world and give everybody empathy. And that we'd have a better world where, where we emphasize and we can understand everybody's situation. And so I hope for the people that are being judgmental right now that don't even know, they haven't even done an autopsy, can learn empathy. And I pray for all of them, all of them, as they learn empathy. And, um, I go, I'm supposed to go next week to have my look, foot looked at to see if it needs, it'll be okay or not. But I know it'll be okay. I just don't know if I should put it off or not. I don't know what to do. I don't think I'm healthy enough to go up to New York. I don't know what's the best idea. I'm trying to figure out what's best. I just want to talk about James and be fluent in Spanish. And he was a genius. He worked at the city of Runner for a long time. And we had this, this thing called laser fish, and he taught himself at like 16 how to use a site that now, you know, is used by top executives that are paid hundreds. He learned how to use it. Uh, it is one of the smartest people you'll ever meet. He loved history. His brother teaches in D.C. with a Ph.D. in history. James just loves, loves history. And he just loves long intellectual conversations. And... He loved to travel with us, and he loved his, he loved all of his many, many, many hamsters and rats that I let them bring to my house. And, um, he grieved and cried for everyone. He grieved and cried for every friend, everybody that was mad at him, because he just wanted everybody to get along. <laughs> He's been through so much. His grandfather passed away this summer as well. His father passed away in early 2013, but he hadn't had a relationship into his adult life, and it was very short. So it wasn't fulfilling. He has people all over the world right now that care. I wish that he knew that then, and I wish there was a way I could have shown him that then. Keep on open the state. But I know it's not. It's like it has to be. He's 27. He has so much to give to this world. We never know what that one person could do. If everybody has something that they're on this earth to do. That will enhance the world in some way. And that's it. I don't know that these will ever be seen.
seen by anybody, but maybe they'll help me. Because after a while, I don't have him. Not with my brother here. There, I certainly have someone that I didn't even ask that came last night, and that was really helpful. But I tend to like, pull away and hide when something horrible happens. And I did. That's what I'm doing now. I'm hiding in the bathroom. I can talk to my mom and my dad or millions of people. I pull away. I don't want anybody gets to see me like this because I like to act like I'm so big and bad and strong. I just, I can see his future. I can close my eyes and I can see it. people as best you can smile more often at them when you when they're here because you don't have tomorrow and I'll like say you love them it doesn't belong here but you know I was so close with some two of my cousins and so I kind of felt like I didn't just have one brother but I had two others so and then I had James I had four and my brother is in another position where he can help me or be supportive and that would be what I turn to even though he needs my support. But then I would probably support him and then lean on my family that I was viewed it. And I'm, that I viewed it as family. And I know I isolate myself from everyone but nobody understands exactly why. They never take the chance, Tom, to try to talk to me to understand why I can't go out of the house and why I can't do this, why I can't do that. I'm just judged and lied on and treated like shit. And people that think there have been my best friends tell me wonderful things like, it sucks you got shot. Yeah, it sucks really bad. James had a really bad scare in 2014. I was there for him the whole way. He excelled. It was a miracle. I don't understand how this happened. I don't. I've never seen him look so good. He was almost unrecognizable. <sighs> he was just unrecognizable. I don't know what the coming days are going to be. I just hope that they are people sharing their love for James and concentrating on their love and what James would want. <laughs> and that's what I hope. I hope I can get through this. Really I know I will. It's not like I hope. It's just I hope that I can do this and be of some help or be a rock or something. I just want something good to come from the stretch. I don't know. That's it. But I don't know if I can do these, but maybe they're gonna fall at all. At least I have a dog that cares about me. Let's check it out right now. R.I.P. To my bro. I can't say a thing yet. Just please keep thoughts and prayers for everyone. This is so much love. Not just for me, but for some of the younger people in his family. Like his nieces and nephews. They really need support. I can't imagine what they're going through. Because Evan lost their mom in 2013. James also lost his oldest nephew in a wreck. I think in 2010. And that was their brother. So they've lost their brother. Their mother. And now their big nephew. Please pray for everyone. And his mom. I don't know who else. Anybody that's going through this. If someone's going through addiction, understand. It's not like the commercials. Putting them out on the street doesn't fix it. 
There's no easy answers. I wish I knew what they were. I wish somebody could tell me. Because I'm so scared that when my brother gets out, it's going to be a repeat. And what he found out today. And I told him if his mom was upset about it, he wouldn't guarantee me when he gets out in a few months that he won't do the same thing. He's just awful. I'd much rather live, I'd much rather live with my illness aside than what they have, I think, even with everything that's wrong with me. It has more cure of a colon transplant is more curable than addiction. A colon transplant on an adult, a spinal cord injury repair that would be in testing would be better. Oh, something good. I know something good. I know it's not. Day two. He's been gone. Day two. Tomorrow, maybe. I'll know more. At least stop recording.